Hi everybody and welcome to this video lecture. In the photo here you can see a classic spring combination of two California native plants, California poppy, which is our state flower, and dwarf lupin. But what exactly do we mean when we describe these two plants as California natives? By the end of this lecture you'll be able to answer that question by providing two definitions of California native as it relates to plants. Along the way, you'll also learn about the three floristic provinces in California. So let's start by defining native. In the Americas, which includes Canada, the USA, Central and South America, a native plant or any living organism is one which occurred naturally in these areas prior to European contact. In California, the first recorded European contact is considered to be September 28, 1542, when the Spaniard Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo sailed into San Diego Bay. In its broadest terms, therefore, California native plants are ones which were growing here prior to 1542, and most of these species, such as the manzanitas, lupins and rock rose you see in the photo, can still be found growing in our natural landscapes today. But how do we define California when we're referring to native plants? One way in which we can define California as an area is by the state lines as shown in the diagram. This is an easy concept to apply because most people are familiar with state lines. Applying this definition, we can say that a California native plant is any plant species that prior to 1542 was naturally occurring within what we recognize today as the state lines. One of the easiest ways to check whether or not a plant is native to California using this definition is using the Jepson herbarium's eFlora or the Jepson manual, and we'll go over this in more detail in one of the labs. One of the problems with this definition, though, is that the region we've called California since 1850 was created by humans for geopolitical purposes, and it has no significance for non-human organisms. Plants and the animals and wind that pollinate their flowers and disperse their seed and spores don't suddenly stop at the state line and go no further. So let's take a look at a different way in which we can define California and other areas that plants are native to. Where plants grow is influenced by abiotic factors such as geology, soil, light, climate, altitude, latitude, longitude, and proximity to bodies of water. So although human-created geopolitical regions are convenient and widely understood ways of expressing where plants or animals are native to, a more ecologically accurate method is one which takes the factors that influence plant growth and species distribution into account. And this is what the science of biogeography does. Biogeography is the study of the geographic distribution of plants, animals, and other forms of life, and the factors that influence their natural distribution across the globe. One of the concepts used by biogeographers to categorize regions that plants are native to is that of floristic provinces. Floristic provinces are actually a subdivision of a wider classification system, so let's step away from California for a moment and take a look at that. In the late 1980s, the Armenian botanist Armin Taktajan built on earlier work from the 1940s by the British botanist Ronald Good and published a hierarchical classification system for the distribution of the world's flora. He defined six floristic kingdoms, of which two are divided into sub-kingdoms. The kingdoms are then divided into 35 floristic regions, which in turn are divided into 152 floristic provinces. A floristic province can be defined as a biogeographical area that has a relatively uniform composition of plants and specific abiotic factors that characterize that area. In the map here, you can see Taktajan's six floristic kingdoms, which are all color coded, and the 35 floristic regions, which are all numbered. So let's come back to focus on California again. 
The geopolitical area that we call California is recognized worldwide as having three main floristic provinces, which you can see illustrated in the diagram here. There's the California floristic province, which is shaded in that sort of cinnamon rust color, the Great Basin floristic province, and the Desert floristic province, which is often referred to as the Sonoran floristic province. Each of these provinces also extends beyond California's state lines. So let's take a look now at each of these three floristic provinces. The Great Basin Floristic Province is the largest of the three, covering around 209,000 square miles in total. But as you can see from the diagram, it only extends slightly into California, covering a very small area of the state east of the Sierra Nevada. Most of the Great Basin Floristic Province is in Nevada, southeastern Oregon, Utah, and Idaho. The defining characteristics of the Great Basin Floristic Province are aridity, wide temperature ranges, and alkaline soils. Dominant plants are ones which are adapted to these conditions and include Big Basin Sagebrush, which you can see in the inset here, and some species of Atriplex, or saltbush. There are around 50 species of saltbush that are native to California, and they're almost all halophytes. This means they have adaptations to help them cope with salty, alkaline soils. The Desert Floristic Province is the smallest of the three floristic provinces, covering under 88,000 square miles in southeastern California, Baja California, southwestern Arizona, and southern Nevada. It includes the Mojave and Sonoran deserts. You may also read that it includes the Colorado Desert, which confusingly isn't in the state of Colorado. It's the name given to the area of the Sonoran Desert that's within California's state lines. And there's a better image illustrating this on the next slide. The Desert Floristic Province is one of extremes. It includes Badwater Basin in Death Valley, which at 282 feet below sea level is the lowest point in North America. It also includes mountains with elevations up to 11,000 feet. The summers are really long and hot, and on August 16, 2020, the highest temperature ever recorded in the US was at Furnace Creek in Death Valley at 130 degrees Fahrenheit. The winters in the desert floristic province are moderate, but there are occasional frosts. The Mojave Desert is colder than the more southerly Sonoran Desert and has longer periods of freezing temperatures. The average annual precipitation is between just 2 to 10 inches in the valleys, but can reach 25 inches on mountain slopes. To give this some local perspective, Watsonville's average annual rainfall is 23 and a half inches and Santa Cruz's is 31 and a half inches. The Mojave Desert receives less summer rain than the Colorado Desert, which is exposed to a summer monsoon rainfall pattern. No part of the desert floristic province has regular rains though, and a year or even more may pass without any measurable rainfall, especially in the region's western part. Much of the plant life in the desert floristic province has adaptations to both heat and extended periods of drought. You'll learn more about plant adaptations to heat and drought in a separate unit. Vegetation can be very sparse, especially in the Mojave Desert, with expanses of bare ground between individual plants that are competing for scarce water resources. Cacti and thorny shrubs are common, but there are also many thornless shrubs and herbaceous plants, including grasses. Higher elevations that receive more rainfall support trees such as juniper and pinyon pine. Plants you may be familiar with from the desert floristic province include the Joshua tree, Yucca brevifolia, which you sometimes see planted as an ornamental in Santa Cruz County. Some agave species and some species of prickly pear, including the beaver tail prickly pear, which has distinctive shades of purplish lavender on its stem pads. The vegetation of the Sonoran Desert is the most diverse of all the North American deserts. 
Common plants include many cacti, such as the iconic saguaro, barrel, and organ pipe cacti, plus prickly pear, choya, ocotillo, yucca, agaves, and mesquite. Some of these plants will thrive in parts of the central coast, but check their cold hardiness before planting them and make sure the soil drains really well. The photo on the right was taken in Superstition Wilderness in Arizona and shows a typical view of the Sonoran Desert. Of the three floristic provinces, the California Floristic Province covers the largest area of California, covering around 70% of the state. If you look at the diagram, you can see that the province extends beyond state lines into the southwestern corner of Oregon, and in the south, it extends into northwestern Baja, California. It also includes all the Channel Islands off the coast of Southern California, plus the Mexican islands of San Cedros, Guadalupe, San Martin, and Todos Santos off the coast of Baja, California. The defining characteristic of the California floristic province is a Mediterranean type climate. The internationally accepted Köppen Geiger climate classification system defines the Mediterranean type climate as one with long, hot or warm, dry summers and cool, wet winters. Snow is rare and average annual rainfall is less than 35 inches. So take a moment to take a look at the map here which shows average annual precipitation across California. You can see that the areas in shades of green and blue receive more than 35 inches a year, which means they don't meet one of the criteria for a Mediterranean type climate. Think about the other criteria too. For example, snow is very common at higher elevations in most of the mountain ranges where winter temperatures are often cold, not just cool. Along much of California's coast, although it doesn't usually rain in the summer, plants do benefit from summer precipitation in the form of fog drip. And therefore, these coastal areas don't strictly conform to the Mediterranean type climate criteria. For these reasons, you should be aware that there's a debate in some circles that the boundaries of the California floristic province should be redefined. That said, Although not all parts of the California floristic province meet all the criteria for a Mediterranean type climate, what is common to most of the California floristic province is that it has a precipitation pattern that's typical of a Mediterranean type climate, meaning most of the rain and snow falls in the winter. This climate pattern began developing between seven and four million years ago. So the native plant of the California floristic province has evolved with this precipitation pattern, and this is why it's the defining characteristic of the province. In conclusion, let's come back to the main goal of this video lecture, which is to illustrate two ways in which we can define California native as it relates to plants. You've already heard that one way of defining a California native plant is a species which naturally occurred within today's state lines prior to the first recorded European contact in 1542. The second, more ecologically accurate definition is any plant that has been naturally occurring in the California floristic province since before 1542. When we're using native plants in ornamental cultivated landscapes, Landscape professionals and home gardeners tend to combine these two definitions and define natives as any plant from the California floristic province, plus any plant from the desert and Great Basin floristic provinces, as long as they occur within California state lines. In future units, you'll continue learning about how to define native when we're working with hybrid plants and cultivars and selecting plants for ecological restoration projects. That's the end of this video lecture. Go take a break and head back to Canvas when you're ready to continue with this unit.